GPX glass processors and LFS large fiber splicers use resistive filaments to process fibers. In order to assure consistent splice performance and thermal response of the filament over its lifetime, it must be normalized regularly. In this video, we will discuss how to normalize a filament. Normalization applies heat to two flat cleaved fibers, which causes the surface tension of the molten glass to round the tips. Then, the software will recommend changes to not only the filament power offset, but also the view to splice distance. Filament power offset is a constant which is added to the splice power of the splice file. This allows two filaments with different thermal response to run the same file with consistent results. View to splice distance determines how far the splice head moves from its view position, where the mirrors are directly under the fiber ends, to the splice position, where the filament is directly under the fiber ends. Typical values will be between 6,000 and 7,000 microns. Normalization files for common combinations of filament type and fiber size are pre-installed on the computer that ships with the unit. You should select a normalization file that corresponds to the type of filament you are using and with a fiber diameter that is closest to the one you intend to use for your application. During normalization, standard silica-clad fibers should be used. For normalizing 125 micron fiber, we recommend Corning SMF28. For normalizing 400 micron fiber, we recommend Newfern Matched Passive Double Clad Optical Fiber. To carry out a filament normalization, first prepare two fibers of the required diameter and load them into the fiber holding blocks. Ensure that the correct normalization file is loaded and initiate the splice process by pressing the start button on the unit or in the graphical user interface. The process will first gap and align the fibers. It is normal for the image to go dark as the camera moves between the front and back views or when it is at the home position before the filament is turned on. The filament then applies a standard amount of heat to the fibers, and the surface tension causes the ends to round. The software then analyzes the image and compares the amount of rounding to what is expected. Based on these measurements, the FFS3 software will recommend an adjustment to the view displace distance and the filament power offset, so that the filament provides the required heating effect. It may take a few iterations for the normalization process to converge. To run the normalization process again, simply take out the fibers, remove the rounded ends, and prepare two new flat cleaved ends. These can be reloaded into the unit to run the normalization process again. It is good practice to keep a log of the filament power offset and view to splice distance set by the normalization process during the lifetime of a filament. If you remove a filament before its end of life, Record the filament age, filament power offset, and view to splice distance. When you next install this filament, these parameters can be input as a starting point to expedite normalization, though it is typical for them to change. It will not be necessary to burn in this filament again. As the filament reaches the end of its useful life, the thermal power delivered may become unstable. When this happens, splice performance may degrade or the normalization may not converge. At that time, contact us about refurbishing your filament.